Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Grab your Bible, cup of coffee. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23. Let's hear some tough preaching this week. So let's go. If you uh, really hate to hear that word hypocrite, then you're going to have trouble with this week's messages. But you know what? That's one of those words that sometimes needs to be used, especially when referring to people who parade their own, uh, shall we say, supposed integrity and their own popularity in front of people, their own privilege in front of people, and then do just the opposite of what they're telling you to do. Oh, it reminds us of things that happened during the lockdowns when you'd have a politician that would say, oh, listen, we're closing all the hair salons. You don't need to get your hair fixed. But, you know, because I am the, the, the image of the government right now, I need to get my hair fixed and I can even call on one of you who's been shut down <laughs> and make you fix my hair. Or the person that said, hey, you know, you can't go anywhere. We're going to put travel restrictions in place. You can't travel, can't go anywhere. Oh, by the way, but don't tell anybody, I'm on my way to the Caribbean for a vacation with my family tomorrow. You know, and, and the word hypocrite just keeps popping up over and over again when we see people act like that. And perhaps the worst place that that word can be demonstrated is from the pulpit or from Christians in particular who may have a position, whether it's preaching or teaching or leading in a church, who promote a certain lifestyle and stand by that and, and, and often even speak against people who are living what would be considered immoral lifestyles, and they turn around and do exactly what they're criticizing. That's a hypocrite. And hypocrites are especially distasteful within religious circles, aren't they? Well, Jesus is about to call out the scribes and the Pharisees for being just that kind of people. And he hits them with, depending on which translation you're coming out of and which commentary, there's seven or eight woes here in chapter 23. And we've made it down to verse 13, where he begins to get down and dirty, you know, honest and ugly with the Pharisees about the way they are living. Let's look at it in verse 13. We're reading out of the Christian Standard Bible, where he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, for you don't go in and you don't allow those entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to make one convert and when he becomes one, you make him twice as fit for hell as you are. Well, now, these are some strong words, and we're going to stop with these for just a minute to explain some things, because obviously Jesus is not happy with the way these folks have been living. Now, they are very evangelical in trying to draw people into their brand of Judaism, but as we have seen throughout the Gospel of Matthew, this is one that's filled with legalism, rules and regulations that have nothing to do with scripture, and it sets up a very uh, a high standard. Sometimes a high standard needs to be set, but here uh, is a group of people setting an impossible standard based on rules they have created that have nothing to do with honoring the Lord. And by setting such a high standard, obviously there are few that get to their place, their pinnacle of so-called righteousness, which allows them to look down on everyone else. And of course, then they build up their own reputation and image so that they, they almost demand that the people look to them and admire them for their supposed religiosity. Well, as the commentators deal with this, I want you to listen to what, uh, what kind of language is used, especially, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees were, they were reproached for uh, disregarding a number of uh, things that were laid down in the law. So they're saying, hey, we've set this real high standard, but then they find ways to get around following through with it uh, as they're supposed to. But in addition to this, the scribes and Pharisees were known for their lengthy, showy prayers, which supposedly mirrored some kind of inner pious compulsion. Now, God finds such pretentious prayer abominable, it's written in Proverbs 28, 9, and because of their practices, the scribes being teachers would be judged much more severely because they should have known better. Opportunity demands a sense of responsibility. Now, let me say that again. I, I love that as a, 
a commentary that I'm reading straight out of the complete biblical library. I can't tell you who wrote this, but I love this sentence. Opportunity demands a sense of responsibility. That's true, especially when you go up another step. The higher the ladder is, as far as uh, when your, your church is larger, your community is larger, when you have an even greater responsibility when it comes to the people that are looking to you for leadership and guidance, uh, that's when it gets even bigger. You know, you have that responsibility to so many more. If you lead them in the wrong direction, you're leading now multitudes away from God. So it's very important that people, as they rise to significant places of authority and responsibility in any community, country, or church, that they understand this completely. They need to live lives in front of their people that exemplify what they want their citizens or their church members to be like. Opportunity demands a sense of responsibility. But when it talks about this uh, idea of converting people to Judaism, I want you to catch something that is an, an interesting fact here. Uh, there were two kinds of proselytes into the Jewish faith. There were proselytes of the gate who were not circumcised, had to meet very few requirements. But the second, which is the one that the Pharisees strove for, was those proselytes of righteousness who were compelled to follow all of the Jewish rites and customs. Now, that means these Pharisees had used almost every method at their command to try to win people to the Jewish faith. It was the monotheistic faith of the day. In contrast, to many of those polytheistic religions, uh, people who had many, many gods that they worshipped and just, you know, you got enough? No, we can add two or three more statues to the list and just, you know, how many gods can you have? Well, how many can you make? I, you know, And so this was the religion of monotheism of the day very attractive to many people. So they would take any effort to win people to their faith. But Jesus used the strongest possible terms of condemnation to describe what they were doing about it. For example, when he uses that phrase, a, a child of hell, it's a Hebraism, meaning an excessively evil person. He showed how they rated, in his own view, their attitudes, which inspired their actions, literally came from hell. So Jesus added that once converted, these proselytes were even worse than the hypocrites who had secured their commitment. Well, that tends to be the truth, doesn't it? When you go out and win someone to your faith, they tend to zealously take hold of it and may go even farther than their own teachers in observing it. So what happens? Oh, listen, they were now even more evil, more bigoted than their mentors. And later developments prove this to be true. Remember in the book of Acts, how it shows that in his travels, the apostle Paul's worst opposition came from the Hellenistic Jews, who were mostly, what, proselytes. They were the ones that had been won to the Jewish faith, and they were the ones most adamant about rejecting Jesus as the Messiah and persecuting and killing those who brought that message. Amazing, isn't it, that the very words of Jesus were fulfilled in the next generation of the first century church as uh, when he said he, he becomes twice as fit for hell as you are, these, these converts that you make. And these were some of the same ones who persecuted the church most severely. Well, friends, if there's any lesson to be learned here, is, it is practice what you preach. And for some people, they take that to mean, well, just don't preach anything and I won't have much to practice. That's not what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to live good and righteous and moral lives according to the scriptures. But just make sure that what you're sharing with others, when you share the gospel and a, a lifestyle that is pleasing unto God and follows the commands of scripture, that as you share that lifestyle, you can look in the mirror and say, I'm practicing what I preach. We'll look at some more of these guys tomorrow and see exactly what they were doing that infuriated Jesus and make sure we're not following that wrong path. God bless you. You have a great day in the Lord. I'll see you right here again tomorrow as we wake up in his word.